it wouldn't have mattered what you said anyway. I would have been like, absolutely. It wouldn't have mattered what you said. You still going to do. That's a contractual obligation. No one can compete with Chris when it comes to just being sort of sturdy. It's coming from solid. Batman, by the way. So, so, so. <laughs> like a little mini ray. Like oh yeah, because we were just back like... there like this. Because <laughs> when we fight, it's, we're fighting with air. Hello and welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. No table. That was a trick. <laughs> On the carpet with us, yes. with Thor, Love and Thunder. Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dad bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? We put a lot into Ragnarok and I, I feel like, you know, you, know, you want to put everything in there and like leave nothing, you know, you put it all on the field. You know, because I kind of thought, well, I'm, this might be the only chance I get to make one of these films. So, like, you know, we really like tried really hard to make something very different and unique and then had the opportunity to make Love and Thunder and I was worried that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as good or you know, that wouldn't be able to evolve the character or tell a story that, you know, that, that kind of elevated itself. How wrong you were, because you did it, mate. You did we it. did it, we did team. It. We all did it. Um, yeah, and I, I, but kind of what I wanted, I was thinking, um, yeah, what would, what, what would freak the fans out and not in a good way. When you associate <laughs> Thor, a big hero, the last thing a Thor fan really wants to see is the word love. So, um, you know, like, oh, <laughs> kissing, yeah. So, like, yeah, so like, I was like, we're, we're lean into that. And, like, that's what we wanted them and make them love love and make the fans excited for Thor for a romance. Each time it's, it's, it's a challenge, you know, you do something great and then you come back and you go, we've got to raise the bar again and thankfully had Taika at the helm to do that and I don't know, it, 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 you know, from the origin story when you have the, you know, the initial sort of outing as a superhero and it's just learning all the, um, the, the strengths and the weaknesses and so on and how will he be this the king in the first film, and then to now where it was, we've kind of broken the character down and rebuilt him a number of times. And um, what we hadn't really explored is the sort of romantic comedy um, set in space. M mixed with a midlife crisis. Midlife crisis, <laughs> uh, which parallels my own experience. Yeah, and, I mean, um, we're all going through, I've had four midlife crises. Yeah, I'm on my seventh. <laughs> we've got one coming up in December. <laughs> in fact, about six minutes. Yeah, set my alarm. <laughs> I mean, it's also working with different, Different cast, different people. Obviously, Natalie's back, and Tessa, and Christian, and, and they all bring out something very different in you. And and uh, I don't know. I I think the the goal is just to have fun and have a good time. And, and if you're enjoying it, then the audiences are, are going to have that same feeling. And it was a it was a riot. It was a laugh. It was madness in a beautiful way. Valkyrie herself is excited to get to reunite with Thor and be on an adventure again, and and so was I. And then to get to do it, you know, with with Natalie um, was just so much fun. I liked the idea of, you know, when we last met her, she was sort of struggling uh, to figure out a, a, a sense of purpose and to sort of get her life together. And now she sort of solidly has this job, a, a sense of purpose, feels connected to it, and also is a bit disgruntled in, in the position and is sort of mired in bureaucracy and, 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 and aching for something. The old ex-girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days, give or take. Am I uh, sensing feelings? Well, you're right. Did I pitch anything? I think I just dropped some comics off. <laughs> Please be in the movie. <laughs> and you made fun of my garden. Made fun of your garden. Uh, yeah, that's right. It was like, your garden's so dead. <laughs> What's wrong with your garden? Like, I don't want you to judge my garden. I better, better work with you. Um, I think Taika, like, asking me to do anything with him, I would have said yes to. I'm such, such a fan. It's, like, such an awesome experience to get to to experience his um, way of creating. And, and yeah, I, I, it wouldn't have mattered what you said anyway. I would have been like, 
absolutely. It wouldn't have mattered what you said you were still going to do it. <laughs> that was a contractual obligation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. I wanted to be like, you know, romantic lines between the, the characters. And I think, that, you know, for me, the main one is um, them meeting up again. And, you know, really, we're just trying to shape that, that relationship between Thor and Jane was a big. Um, it was a big mission, and, you know, because like they hadn't seen each other for eight years. The flashbacks. So what cool. happens? Yeah, you know, when you yeah. you're reunited, and the and the big flashback to uh, you know the, to the, the days of their relationship helped a lot. Oh, that's so! Cool. I love yeah, that. That montage. sequence is that's so cool. cool. The costumes are just like the costume party was just oh, yeah. like the greatest. That yeah. was, that <laughs> you was and a actually, hot dog. Well, that's Everyone my wants hot dog to see. <laughs> Everyone wants to see Chris as a hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's my Halloween go to. <laughs> the only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. I was very uh, grateful to get to work with Saka and all these gang because they're, they're so bloody talented and. I'd loved uh, uh, Ragnarok and uh, Jojo Rabbit. And well, you know, one thing I wasn't expecting, my kids have never really shown any interest in anything I've ever done. <laughs> and it was the first film ever that I, I wasn't certain that I'd be able to do it. And they went to me, no, you're doing this film. Yeah. And they absolutely insisted on it. So I took their marching orders and said, yes, <laughs> definitely. All right. But it was also the first time I'd worked so much with um, all the technology, all the wizardry, the magic stuff that you use, uh, with the blue screen and whatnot, and the volume, like you were talking about, that was all, that was all new to me. When you look at the comic books, he's a very muscular guy, right? And I was not, and, and I was starting three days after finishing another film. You can't really compete with Chris when it comes to <laughs> being muscular anyway, so we said, all right, we've got to figure out a different way. So have him be skinny and have a more supernatural you know, vibe and creepiness to it. There's, you like that Aphex Twin, right? Come yeah, to Daddy yeah. video. There was, that was one which was always a reference for me that I love so much, and Nosferatu, and just recognizing, look, I can't, no one can compete with Chris, and it comes to just being sort of sturdy. It's coming from solid. Batman, by the way. So, <laughs> so you know, you look, you being a more pretty good in those sort films. of creepy, you know, ethereal uh, uh, feel to it felt right. <laughs> the thing that drew me to him, I mean, I, uh, villains are, so hard to create because you know, especially in these bigger films, because it's always like they want to own the world or destroy the world, and you know, that's it. And um, but finding a villain who I think is the most sympathetic and probably best villain that you know we've had in uh, the MCU but to create a sympathetic villain is, um, is a big feat, and that's what in the comics, you know, yeah, you see his, his backstory and what uh, drove him to become the God Butcher. And at Marvel, when we were coming up with ideas for the film, we all instantly wanted to do that sort of Remember what I told you. Do you ever feel lost? Just look into the eyes of the people that you love. Not me. What? Just listening. And well, that's you also got to watch out for that when you're having so much fun on set and you forget you're trying to tell a, <laughs> to story, tell a story <laughs> and not just, you don't want to put out a, you know, two hours of jokes and uh, you know, you're going to try and make something meaningful as well. And um, so, you know, you've also got to balance it out. Yeah, it's a fine line between the kind of just about to break and just holding it together where I think they're sort of, it's the most beautiful, spontaneous, unpredictable. I was naked for most of it too. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was memorable. Was that funny? Funny for everyone else. <laughs> everyone else had a laugh. It was, uh, I didn't remember you. Worked so I didn't hard. remember that either. You were naked? No, you the weren't. performance was so strong. We don't, Nobody that knows. wasn't That was the goal. That I was like, eyes like, up here, no. eyes up here. Well, there was also naked. you yeah. guys. Um, vulnerable. In the fight, everyone was like in the background, just going like this, like. Oh, fighting by the themselves, that would be CG. These other people were going to come in. It looked like a little mini race. Just oh, three yeah, people. We were just sat there like this. Because when we fight, it's, we're fighting with air. So yeah. we're just, and it, they kept going and they kept For so back long. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. It's like, how many of these things are there? Are we still in the frame? Also, I, um, so Russell has this really great stuff that he's doing with his <laughs> thing as yeah. Zeus, yeah. but he, would sometimes stand outside of my trailer practicing, and he'd be like in his tennis skirt and his like little tendrils, and I would just be in my trailer. Like, <laughs> Please tell me you filmed it. I did film it once, and I was like, this is totally inappropriate. I shouldn't do this, but I, like, it was the 
cutest <laughs> thing. Oh. It'd be like in his little tennis skirt or like a little. It was like so adorable. Anyway, so, so I would cool. watch him, but he didn't know I was watching him practice <laughs> with his little thing. Oh God. He will when it's on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. She's just my first bad guy. You never forget your first. Like the other gods have well, like like all of these films, there's a ton of choreography and and often you're fighting um, imaginary CG characters. Mm -hmm. um, but we had an incredible team, a stunt team, and and uh, rehearsed for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then on the day, you start tweaking it, and so it's a it, it, there's a sort of athleticism that I find is I didn't expect when I started being an actor. I thought. I was going to perform and so on, and then it does become like a, a sport, and you're sweating, and you there's injuries and so on, and but it, it's fun. I love it, and the enthusiasm from everyone else for those scenes, and the energy that comes out of it is um, is infectious and fun. It's also sort of fun that sort of practical, like the mix, like there's the scene where Christian's character is like controlling us, like he can like suspend us and like move us, and trying to figure out like how you do that in practical terms. What were we on again? I don't remember. We were on like these little like doodads and someone would just like push us in, right? And mm -hmm. then we'd be like, mm. <laughs> you know, there's like a, <laughs> it's like real, um, you know. Yeah, there's nothing remember else like, there. It was all put in there later on. You got to plug into your, the, the young child. It's yeah. such, it's <laughs> such child's play. It's yeah. such child's play, but it also requires such a, um, uh, for, for both, people you're submitting to like both the ridiculousness of it and then also real commitment to the thing like he has to not laugh when I'm like mm, mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's it, it, it's uh yeah it's like it's like kids it's like kids playing and that it, that to me is always the tremendous thing it's like kids at a high level because we have like tricks and money and but it's still rinky dink sometimes you know you're still like on a little loop de doo and you know nothing rinky dink actual. loop de doo you know what i mean Thingy -jig. technical terms yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but then craft makes it cool i think it was three days of you guys all being gagged yeah and i was just sort of like i think the actual writing was like that right yeah yeah and then i must have done like that things. it just sort of kept on going and you were shouting things at me and i was coming up with stuff and yeah. acting yeah. i felt like a demented nun or something yeah. the way I felt. <laughs> and, but all i could see was your eyes and i was just going oh my god are they looking at me going oh <laughs> like, this is the worst thing ever because no one could respond to me. And then after that, and then I did also notice that none of that ended up in the film. So I think that must have been the answer. Of, like, yes, it was the worst thing <laughs> I'd ever seen of me. But it was a nice little trial by fire yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of seeing, yeah, what works here? What doesn't? Because you know? I have something worth fighting for. I've got, I've got to say, one moment for me was just when we first got to fight. I did get a real kick out of that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a lot older than when I last did any big fight sequences <laughs> like that. And I was looking at you going, oh, sh <laughs> bigger than me and he and stuff. But it was so much fun. That was a lot of fun. And yeah. Then, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I absolutely. really enjoyed that. Teaming up with Natalie again, Tessa, and then Christian, who I hadn't worked with. I mean, the whole thing was a joy. But, but the, 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 those fight scenes are always so much fun. And especially... That first day that Christian was talking about, I, we didn't know what he was going to do, had a rough idea, and then came in and was incredibly intimidating and scary. And, and I thought, is this going to this gonna be too much in a Disney film? But it, it worked. Like too scary? <laughs> too scary, yeah. I was like, I'm scared. My kids are going <laughs> to run out of the, the theatre. <laughs> I think that, I won't say which scene, but there's one scene that's one of the most beautifully, like beautiful visually scenes I've seen on film that we shot in real life at the Best Buy parking lot. Do you remember that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just kind of wild to be on yeah. this like size movie. And we were literally in a parking lot yeah. with like a blue screen. Yeah. And being like doing this really dramatic thing. And yeah. 
it looks so stunning. On film. Yeah, and yeah. every time I see it, I'm like, it's the best by parking lot. <laughs> I, think, I think I might have been in the same place because I yeah. texted you and I went, that Glendale parking lot <laughs> yeah, stuff it. actually really worked. Didn't <laughs> yeah. 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 I haven't yeah. noticed it was best by, like, but I knew. Five minutes from my house. Did Where we need we? to go to Australia <laughs> in the first yeah. place? I didn't know. I didn't know because I wasn't there. But then someone last night after the premiere was like, I heard Natalie tell her her daughter or her son that she was in the Best Buy parking lot during that scene. And I was like, no like wait, way, it looks that. beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It gives you like such respect for the artist. Like yeah. the, when you see the credits too, and there's thousands of people that worked on all the visual effects and you're like, mm. they made that out of the Best Buy parking yeah. lot. Like it's, it's, it's just mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, I think mine is a similar thing of when we shot, this was towards the end, but we shot um, in what is supposed to be New Asgard and they built and it's all practical and it's just mm. astounding like mm -hmm. it's so beautiful it looks like this like seaside Norway little town with like bars and like a, it's crazy we, how beautiful they, that yeah, set was yeah it was like great that, so it was, you're just like wow it's nice to be on locations and like yeah cause like, more and more everyone's been stuck in studios and just yeah. kind of blue screens and to actually go to a giant set that mm. was literally had little alleyways and mm -hmm. and like bars and saying real and they character. had a restaurant in it and uh, that were like was full of glasses and cutlery and stuff and it was <laughs> it was crazy and uh, we never shot inside that restaurant. It feels like it's that should exist for people to like go hang out there. Just gonna hang out. It's always a tragedy, isn't it? You yeah. shoot on these big beautiful sets, towns that have been built and houses and so on, and. Two weeks later. I know, they tear it all down. Tear it all down. I, I was like, oh, it's just a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't they have kept it there? I feel like I'd go visit They always say it's insurance. Uh, so many times I've asked people, oh, can't yeah. we leave it there? They should. It's a couple of times when they've done it, but they have to get all waivers and all yeah, that yeah. for it. Yeah. One of the other memorable bits for me, though, was working with India, with uh, oh, yeah. Chris's little girl, because <laughs> she was so magnificent in it. But it was also so cute seeing your relationship yeah. and her having to be like, who's this weird <laughs> bald bloke who's like all covered in scars and crying over? Like, yeah, dad. <laughs> and she and you kind of, you know, gently, you know, what a good dad you are, gently, you know, coaxing her through it. Like, no, just stay there. I know he's a bit disgusting, but just stay there with it. It was good. And it's a she's supposed scene, to kiss you, you on know? the top of the head, and she's like, it's all sticky. <laughs> so she went, she, she, she did, did this. <laughs> I was like, India, you're not actually kissing his head. She's like, it's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> were once used for battle. Now they're but humble tools for peace. I need to figure out exactly who I am. I want to choose my own path. Live in the moment. Superheroing days are over. Um, did we talk about music? Yeah, we talked about that, didn't we? The Just music. How much music was the so music. important on the set? Yeah, it, really it was. It was lovely. It created such a great yeah, vibe. It does. That you did, Taika, yeah, you, know? you need to have. Uh, well, like for me, it's uh, yeah, you can have a job or work, and you know I like yeah. to go to work, and I don't want it to even feel like it's a job. Oh, my job. You know, I like to be on set and to remind everyone that you know, I mean, really, you know, they still haven't cotton on to the fact that what we do is kind of like a make believe mm -hmm. like job. You know, like and play you get to go and pretend and like have fun you know, and yeah. play in the sand sandbox. And um and I just like to remind people of like we've got to be really you know, we've got to celebrate the fact that we get to still do this. I, every every time yeah. I go to work and I get in the car, I'm excited. I'm like, I can't believe I get to be on a movie. And um, yeah, some days are hard, some days are really great, but um you know it's a it's it's a joy to have to be around people that I, I really like mm. and respect, I only want to work with people that you know like, are cool and try and play music and make it feel like it's you know we're all a big family in the house at you know at Christmas. That's what was on the playlist? Yeah. It all depended on the mood, didn't it? You know, yeah, well, that's mood, what, because that's say, it. Emotion comes through the years. Yeah, so he would be doing some, either weird, creepy stuff when I was arriving. But he would arrive and have like the soundtrack stuff. to the, to the yeah. Shining. Yeah, brr, brr, right. Brr, yeah, brr, yeah. Brr, yeah. Brr, yeah. Uh, it was great. Yeah. It meant everybody feels the same way. It was yeah. good. It was yeah. great. The soundtrack to Gallipoli. Yeah, and then you'd write a lot across the set. 
like the final scene. <laughs> Jean Michel Jarre. Yeah. And then when we were in the Glendale parking lot and around then, then you'd start. You were making sure everyone was fit. Oh, at yeah. that point, it was on like what hour. was it on the hour squats and push-ups. Twenty yes. push-ups, twenty squats. Yeah. yeah, on the hour. Exactly. I couldn't yeah. do it with my. So by the end of the day, <laughs> you've done ten rounds of that. Is that two hundred push-ups? Two hundred push-ups, two hundred squats. Yeah. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flip. Oh. You flip too hard, damn it! Shall we help him? And eventually, grape. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This has been Entertainment Weekly's Round the Table <laughs> on the Carpet. Um, we're from Thor, Love and Thunder. Can't wait for you all to see it. Opening in cinemas on July 8th. <laughs>